Plant-based proteins like Impossible uh, Foods, Impossible Burger, um, are really interesting technologies that I think are going to be fully fleshed out in about the next five years. Um, they're about 80% of the way there in terms of taste um, and cost, and I think another five years' time of innovation, it's going to be a real challenge to the conventional meat industry um, because their taste will have gotten so close to meat and the price will be a lot closer too. Um, but I would look at that timeline as is not um, a race to see traditional meat versus vegetarian-based meat. I would look at it more as there's an underlying consumer uh, insight there that people want clean food. And whether it's impossible that's going to supply that or the New Zealand beef and lamb, um, the, the fact still remains that it's all being driven by the consumer need around clean food. So cellular agriculture is a broad term for um, people that can take cell cultures from meat and reproduce them in a lab. Um, and so the technology is still very early, but in another 10, 15 years time, the technology is getting cheaper and faster and better over time. And I think combining that with consumer perceptions around it, which are a little bit shaky right now, I think it might be a generational thing, but people come around to it. I think it can be a really powerful tool to shake up the industry. Um, I think what will happen is that I don't believe it will replace your steak overnight, but what I do believe is it has a power to replace a lot of the lower grade meat that might be out there in the market because people will say, if I can get this um, you know, from a lab in a clean room and environment versus something else, they will. Um, so you might see that as a threat. I almost see that as an opportunity to say, if New Zealand believes that they have the best beef and lamb, why wouldn't New Zealand want to be the prototype for something to multiply, right? If you have the choice of multiplying cells, you can choose any animal you want in the world. I think that's an interesting way to look at it is how do you choose something like, you know, maybe the New Zealand cow and the New Zealand lamb um, are the things that get multiplied in those labs. Um, and I think that's a way to really um, thrive with these disruptive innovations instead of kind of rejecting them.